Some of the major developments we are tracking deaths around the world due to confirmed cases of coronavirus hit a new high soaring above 700,000 for the first time. Now more than 18 and a half million people are known to be infected as more than 11 million recover. And with me here leading things off as always, ABC chief medical correspondent Dr. Jen Ashen. And Dr. Jen, we know that hospital ICUs in Georgia, Alabama, Florida, all reporting that they are at near capacity. Which right brings into question the treatment options that are now available for people who have severe cases of COVID-19. Yeah, and that is such a concern, Amy. The good news is, is that the majority of cases of COVID-19 can be managed at home, but when you talk about severe cases requiring hospitalization, ICU management, lots of medications being studied right now, we divide them up into those that are showing promising evidence thus far. Remdesivir, that anti-Ebola drug in IV form, granted emergency use authorization by the FDA. FDA. People are familiar with that. Dexamethasone, the steroid, it is available in every hospital basically in the world. It's cheap. We've had it for a long time. Also showing some promise in clinical trials. All right, those are the drugs that have promising evidence. Uh, there are others, though, that fall into a gray zone. Exactly. And those are being considered at this point showing mixed evidence. So as we break them down, one of them uh, is called EIDD. 2801, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. That's an oral pill uh, antiviral medication that's shown some promise in human cells and in animal studies. Immune therapy, things like convalescent plasma and monoclonal antibodies. There are these cytokine inhibitors that really kind of work to dampen that major inflammatory response. One of them is called TOSI and then blood thinners. So all of these at this point showing what we are referring to as mixed evidence in terms of being effective. All right, and then there are the treatments treatment options that right now have not shown that they do more benefit than harm. Right, and the two big ones I think in that category right now, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine, and uh, there's AIDS drugs, lipanavir and ritonavir, also not really showing promising results in clinical trials. But I want to be clear as we learn more, all of this may change. It's being aggressively studied, not just here in the U.S., but worldwide. All right, thank you so much, you Dr. Bet. Jen. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.